Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology as well as work vlogs. And today I wanted to switch it up a little bit and talk about a slightly different topic on how you can live your best life. So lately a lot of things have been changing and I have been listening to a lot of different podcasts and picking up different books. And I wanted to make this video to kind of inspire you guys to maybe start being more proactive with decisions that you're making or maybe even try that new side hustle that you've been thinking about. So yeah, let me know in the comments how you guys feel about videos like these additional to cybersecurity as well as work vlog videos. Okay, so the first thing I have on this list is to write down and identify your priorities. Now, of course, this is gonna look different for everyone. For example, I prioritize things like working on things I'm passionate about and financial independence, but also I also value hanging out with friends and family. So this should be a small list of things that you really value and care about in life. And if you have no idea where to start, one good way to start identifying those things that you care about in life is to think about five, 10, 20 years from now, what do you see yourself doing in your day to day? Who do you see yourself hanging out with? What do you see yourself working on for your career? And what do you see yourself doing in your free time? Like your hobbies, people you spend time with, uh, where you're living, like the state, the country, uh, if it's a city, a suburb, if you have pets, if you're volunteering, things like that. And based on that ideal future life that you want to be living, what are those values that you see in that future life that you can basically adapt and take on to your life right now and try to incorporate as many of those values in your day-to-day -day life in the present. For example, if I really value travel, which I do, and I see myself traveling a lot in the future when I'm older with family or with friends, then what can I do now, preferably as cheap as possible, to still travel but also still stay within my budget for my financial goals? Like maybe just taking a day trip to the beach or going hiking or visiting a nearby town that I haven't been to before instead of having to fly all the way to Japan or something to have a vacation. So first, identifying those key things that you value in life is going to be really helpful to helping you make obviously the best out of your life. Okay, so the next part is to acknowledge that you are the main character of your life. So this is a trend I've been seeing a lot on TikTok and Instagram about being the main character of your life. And there was actually a YouTuber I was watching, Lynette Atkins. Um, I really, really love her content and all of it is kind of about living your best life and living by your own values. So what I mean by acknowledging that you're the main character of your life basically is two things. The universe is working to help you achieve your goals and to help you figure out who you are and basically helping you become the best version of yourself at all times in whatever decisions that you're making. And the second piece is that you make the decisions in your life. You're the person that decides for yourself whether or not you wanna do something or not do something or you want to go somewhere or not go somewhere basically you are the gatekeeper of things in life that you want or don't want nowadays especially when life is so hectic and you feel like there's so much going on and things that you can't control keep popping up whether it's work or school or just your personal life a lot of times you need to remind yourself that you are the person who decides whether or not these things or distractions can stay part of your life for example a lot of times people can feel really tied down to things that they already have or are already doing let's say you're working a job that you don't really like but it pays the bills it gets food on the table but at the end of the day you come home and you are miserable you don't have energy to do anything else and this job doesn't challenge you or help bring you out outside of your comfort zone to do things that you're passionate about, you have to remember that you're the person who can choose whether or not you stay or do not stay in this job. Don't let the reason that you stay be just because you're afraid of what's out there or you're afraid of not finding another job. Because going back to my first point, the universe is helping guide you towards the right direction. I think just having faith that a lot of things work out in the end for the best, even if something bad happens, it's always a learning opportunity. And as much as you learn and experience over time, the bigger of a person you'll grow into. And then over time, it'll become easier and easier for you to make these hard decisions when you know that you have to leave something to take that next step in life. This makes it so much easier to live life according to your own means and expect that the world is going to help give you what you need to basically take that next step into what you actually want to do and are passionate about. Okay, so the next thing is to ignore the background noise. So this is something that I've really struggled with throughout most of my life actually because I'm very hyper aware of what I think people might be thinking of me, but at the end of the day, after you know being in a corporate job for two years and really realizing that people are not thinking about you. <laughs> people are focused on their own lives. People have their own worries and stresses and people and work and life that they're thinking about. And 99.9 .9 times out of 10 that you're thinking that someone is thinking about you or, or judging you, they're probably not because they have other things in their own life that they're probably thinking about. So basically, if there's something that you wanna do like starting a YouTube channel or writing a blog or doing freelance writing, but one of the main things that's stopping you is what people are gonna think about you, how people are gonna react, if people are gonna judge you a certain way, that's honestly a sign that you should just go for it and then really prove to yourself that, hey, these people don't even care that I started a YouTube channel or, oh, these people, aren't even judging me they're actually 
congratulating me or saying oh wow that's so cool i want to do that too and i feel like that just opens up a lot of doors when you go for it and maybe if you're the only person in your group that's doing something more creative or something more out of the box compared to just working a normal nine to five you could also help inspire other people in your friend group or community that might want to do the same thing but they're also nervous about being judged or being talked about by other people so just being able to ignore that background noise of what you think someone might be talking about you or saying about you behind your back at the end of the day even if they are doing that none of that really affects you at all because at the end of the day if you're doing something or even not doing something either way someone will probably be saying something about you so you might as well just do the thing that you want to do move on with your life and basically make the best out of what you can all right guys i did just change my batteries so if you see a slight change of angle that is why but now that we've gone through everything about actually starting finding the things that you want to start on the next part is actually putting it into action which goes into making a plan and sticking with it so oftentimes when you start new things or when you're really passionate and excited about something usually that excitement lasts from a few days to a few weeks depending on I don't know how busy you are, what kinds of things that you already have on your plate. And a lot of times after that initial excitement is gone, you usually go back to your day-to-day -day and your business as usual before you started that hobby or passion project. And that is a big trap that I find myself falling for all the time because I'll start projects because I think I really like painting. And then I'll buy this painting set. Actually, a better example is when I thought I wanted to play piano and this why not the best example because I actually quit that part, but <laughs> but maybe that actually works better for this scenario. At the beginning of quarantine, I was spending so much time at home and I thought that I wanted to pick up some hobbies. And one of them was playing piano. I had always wanted to play my whole life. I wanted to have some kind of musical talent. I used to play trumpet in elementary school. So I bought this electric keyboard from Amazon. Thankfully, it wasn't that expensive, but basically I played it for maybe two or three weeks and then I have never touched that piano again. So that is one of the perfect examples of if I actually wanted to play piano and really learn, I would have taken the steps to learn how to read sheet music, start from the basics, maybe take an online course for learning how to play piano, maybe even finding an accountability partner that doesn't necessarily have to be learning how to play piano, but maybe is learning some other hobby or skill and we can just kind of talk to each other about our progress for each day and how we're doing. Because a lot of times when you're really passionate about something, you pull the trigger, you buy that new keyboard or that new kayak or whatever, and then that excitement kind of fizzles out after a little while and you kind of give up on it or you kind of forget about it. It gets put on the back burner because you have other priorities in life that you want to, that you have to focus on. But obviously one important thing to note here is that if you keep starting these things and never actually try to learn them or try to put in that time and effort, then that becomes a pattern in your life that really kind of follows you wherever you go. So I noticed the best way to kind of keep that mindset of, hey, I want to learn this skill and I'm going to do X, Y, Z to get there is to make a plan and stick to it. For example, I use a calendar and I also have a to-do list where I write down all of my daily to-dos and different things I have coming up throughout the week. And that's something that I know I'll stick to because I want to hold myself accountable for those things because I see myself as a person who follows my to-do list and follows my calendar. So find the thing that sticks for you. It might not be a calendar. It might not be a to-do list. It might just be a sticky note that you want yourself to do XYZ every Wednesday. And this is how I'm actually also sticking to working out every day. And then slowly but surely, after a few weeks or months of doing this, you realize that you're really starting to pick up speed. Okay, so the next piece of this is finding your supporters and your circles and bringing people up with you. So obviously people are a really important part of everyone's life. Humans are meant to be social creatures and the best way to do things is to do it with friends or with a group and not just by yourself. So I mentioned this a little bit in the previous point, but even if you don't have someone in your life who you know is interested in certain things that you are, you can still find supporters and people that care about your success and what you're doing to improve yourself. This could be family members, friends, coworkers, your school community, any religious community. Believe it or not, you probably have more supporters and friends that you think. I know in the COVID era, it can be a lot harder to kind of socialize and meet different people, which is why meeting people virtually in different subreddits or Discord channels is also very helpful, as well as apps like Clubhouse or or anywhere where you can make a more human connection and talk to people on a relatable level. And bringing others up with you is another piece of this because all of this is really a give and take. If people are giving their energy to you to help bring you up and give you that push that you need to start whatever that you wanna do, you also wanna give that back for people that you're helping, people that you're mentoring, uh, giving advice to different people that might be interested in doing what you're currently doing. Those are all awesome ways to give back and basically keep that pay it forward loop so the main way that I do this is through mentorship because I love being a mentor to anyone who is interested in cybersecurity, technology, uh, 
and just being on this channel i love answering you guys' questions and responding back to you guys giving advice in whatever situations that you guys are dealing with a lot of it is school picking a major finding a job deciding which certification that you should get for whatever role that you're going into these are all things that give me energy as well as helping you guys answer whatever questions that you might have so definitely find that balance i'm not saying to help everyone in everything in every single scenario because of course you still want to show up for yourself and your responsibilities that you have to do but being someone that's also known as a mentor someone who brings other people up is going to be something that really impacts you and the communities around you and who knows how many lives you can impact okay so that basically covers the give and take from external sources so the next thing is that give and take with your internal which has to do with journaling and reflecting on your progress and all the steps that you've taken to reach whatever goals that you've gotten down so i started journaling after i started my full-time job it was about maybe three months after i graduated with my bachelor's degree and i was feeling really lost because i had moved to a new city i had no friends in the city i was also really stressed out at work because it was brand new skill set brand new people environment things i'm working on so i definitely felt like i was always under pressure to perform and a lot of this was just myself honestly so because of this my mental health wasn't the best and i did not feel great waking up for work every day and one thing that i started doing was actually journaling and i do this thing called stream of consciousness journaling which i know a lot of people have different journaling types like bullet journaling or actually i don't know that many types of journaling but i know there's a lot but i do stream of conscious journaling which is basically twice a week so at the end of the work week on fridays and then at the end of the weekends on sundays i know some people do it like every three days to make it evenly spread out throughout the week but i like to separate my weekends and my work weeks and basically just write down with no objective no incentive i just start writing down whatever comes to mind and let that stream of consciousness flow because i think that's the best way to get my real thoughts and emotions out on paper and i write basically really informally it's usually just one long sentence and there's no grammar corrections or anything i just write it as it is and then at the end i'll give myself a little rating about how i thought the week or the weekend went so i've been doing my weekly journaling for almost two years now but my weekend journaling is something newer that i just started doing halfway through the pandemic because i noticed that all the things i write down in my weekday journal i don't encompass anything for my weekends so that's why i wanted to include that just to see how i'm feeling on the weekends too but yeah so basically the things i learned are that the longer my stream of consciousness is the more anxious i seem to be because if my thoughts are just rambling and rambling on and on that basically gives me a heads up that i am obviously feeling overwhelmed a little bit anxious and i need to think about some of the things i wrote down and then if i have ratings for the week or the weekend that are like a six or anything lower than a seven basically for a few weeks consecutively then i know that there's something wrong whether it's something at work or something in my personal life there's something that is causing me some kind of anxiety because i try to stick to a seven out of ten for my weeks as a minimum for you know good weeks i mean everyone's rating system is going to be different but but basically five out of ten is the average six is a little above average and seven is kind of like the minimum of a pretty good week so i want to at least have pretty good weeks right this journaling and inner self-reflection has been really good for my mental health and just seeing where i am how i feel and it also helps me lock down things that are actually causing that anxiety even though they might be subconscious and then besides that inner self-reflection it's also just a really good way to write down your progress for example i can just look back to november 2019 and basically see everything that i was thinking for that week i can see what those thoughts are i can see how i was feeling the rating that i gave myself for the week and that's also another way to really put your problems into perspective because when i read back in those two-year-old journal entries i'm talking about these problems that i think are really big in the present but now that i look back from my future point of view i see that those problems are not nearly as big as i think they are i was just really in my head about certain things or i just felt really big pressures internally and externally to perform or be a certain way and looking back either those things didn't matter at all or they didn't impact me the way that i just assumed they would so that is another reason why journaling is so important because you start seeing that the problems in your hindsight or your rear view mirror are a lot smaller than they seem because you can see it from that future perspective of hey this problem wasn't as big as i thought so moving forward when i see a problem like that that i think is really serious it may not actually be that serious and i shouldn't spend that much time stressing myself over it especially for things that i can't control and can't change okay so the last thing that is part of this video is health is wealth and this is something that i have learned after graduating college as well because throughout most of my life i did not really take care of myself the way that i should have i eat a lot of junk food i never worked out i basically lived a very 
non-active lifestyle and that is not something that I want for myself in the future. For example, I talked to you guys about how I feel like I have a really bad slouching problem and now with my workout routine that I've started to pick up, I'm actually doing back workouts and shoulder and arm workouts to try to help fix that problem. I don't really know if I see uh, any progress yet, but I will let you guys know if that's working. But basically, what you put into your body is what you get out. If you're just constantly eating hot Cheetos and drinking soda, you're not really giving your body the nutrients and the essential vitamins that it needs to thrive and give yourself the best ideas and feed your brain and really energize yourself. And all of this really impacts how you feel and what you do and how you're able to function on your day-to-day -day basis. This goes the same way for not sleeping enough because that I noticed is a really big issue among people that I know at least. And I think a lot of people who are transitioning into the workforce who may not you know, be morning people, and I'm not a morning person. I do not enjoy waking up early but now i've gotten used to because i sleep by 10 11 and i wake up at a reasonable time where i get eight hours a day and everything that goes into your health is basically going to help your body thrive throughout the day and not just survive to get through because if you're tired your brain isn't going to be coming up with creative ideas to come up with that next side hustle idea or come up with that next big project at work or even being able to give your friends and family the attention and time that they deserve or the self-care that you need to provide yourself. So for me, the easiest part to kind of fix this whole trend was to first start getting rid of all the snacks that you have, any super sugary drinks that you're putting into your body, and you don't have to throw these away, you can just donate them or put them out of sight so you're not trying to get to your snacks every other day, and then try to make sure that you get to bed at a reasonable time so you can take 30 or 40 minutes to try to fall asleep and have that deep sleep that your body needs to heal and be productive. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. I know this is a little bit deviated from my normal cybersecurity and work vlog videos, but I do also want to go towards some more career-focused route of my channel as well. And definitely let me know what you guys think about content like this. I am open to all suggestions. Don't worry, you will not hurt my feelings. Just let me know what you think. And yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.